Dear students, welcome to the NIO studio. This is Shubhodna Chakraborty. Well, to lead an enjoyable life, to, to enjoy the each and every aspect of life, one needs to be healthy. Not only that, being healthy can be extremely beneficial not only for the individual but also for the society. A productive person has a healthy mind and a healthy body. And here, in health psychology, we will study about various psychological factors which fosters health and well-being. Our objectives are, first, we will study about the concept of health and well-being. Then, we will study about the health-promoting behaviors and various kind of threats to the health. Not only that, we will also study about the various lifestyle changes which one needs to do for fostering health. And later on, we will also study about various risks which can occur because of sexual relationships. Now, let's start with concept of health and well-being. When we talk about health, a health is nothing but a state of harmony between the physical, mental and spiritual well-being. It is a positive state. When we talk about a healthy person, we are basically talking about a positive state. It is not only about the absence of illness. Health is an integral factor in an individual's personal and social life. And there are many challenges to the quality of life for people today. Well, the kind of challenges are environmental challenge and social challenge. When we talk about the environmental challenge, we talk about the rapid change in the external environment and coping with stresses imposed by it. And when we talk about the social challenge, we basically talk about the various changes in the social structure like disintegration of family, increase in competition and consumerism which somehow leads to frustration, loneliness, conflict and various kind of psychosomatic disorders. Now, we are going to talk about something very important that is stress which is considered as a silent killer which damages the psychological and physical health too. Now, what is stress? Well, the stress is our response to events that are viewed as threatening and it also disrupts the psychological functioning. Now, there are various kinds of stressors. When we talk about stressors, now what, what is a stressor? It is, they are the situations and factors in the environment which cause stress on us. These are called stressors. Stressors have been further divided into various categories. The first category is stressful life events like divorce, retirement, pregnancy, death of a near and dear one, unemployment, these kind of things can actually put lots of stress on you. Then, hustles of everyday life, like shopping, too many commitments, commuting to workplace in difficult situations, all this comes under the hassles of everyday life. Then, work-related stress, like role ambiguity, identity crisis, unpleasant work environment, conflict with colleagues, meeting targets, etc. There are many more. And at last, something which is again very important, catastrophic events like earthquakes, floods, cyclones, etc. Now, think about, you have to imagine here, think about a situation that you are in a certain job. You go at 9 o'clock in the morning and you come at around 9.30 and 10 o'clock at night. And within, and within this time duration, suppose you are, you are loaded with so much work, you are having so many backlogs, you have to complete so many assignments. Not only that, you have some, some sort of problem at your home front. And imagine you are stuck in a jam and suddenly there is a small earthquake which happened. Just imagine the kind of stress you are going through. So, here I gave you an amazing example of what kind of stresses can actually happen to you. Now, Stress is a potential health hazard and when you will come to know what sort of health hazard it can create, you will be amazed. Well, the effect of stress depends also upon person to person. 
how optimistic a person is, what are his health beliefs, what sort of emotional state he is in. All these kind of things also depend upon. Now, to achieve good health, one requires to follow certain patterns of behavior. For an example, relaxation. Meditation involves focusing attention on an object, word or phrase has been found to have a calming effect on the person. Progressive muscle relaxation. Well, this is nothing but systematically tensing and then relaxing the muscles while lying down or sitting comfortably. Relaxation also involves deep breathing, like holding one's breath for a few seconds and then exhaling slowly. All these techniques can actually relax and de-stress an individual. Now next is exercise. Well, we have all heard that there is a sound mind in a sound body. Exercise strengthens the inner organs and it also improves the use of oxygen by the body. Now, for an example, if you jog, do bicycling daily, it will be quite useful for you. You should also know about the benefits of exercising. The first is endurance, fitness, capacity for physical work. Trust me, it will increase. The body weight control, control of hypertension, stress tolerance, attention, concentration, all these kinds of things are benefits of exercising. Third is weight control. Well, weight control is very important because with obesity risk of diabetes type 2, well, what happens is when someone is an obese, the risk of diabetes type 2 increases. Not only that, high blood pressure, cholesterol level also increases and it is also a cause of early mortality. Poor regulation of foods lead to high accumulation of fat. And genetic factors and stress also contribute to obesity. Well, the amount of junk food which is being eaten by individuals today is somehow is also a big factor. Well, people try various ways to control obesity like dieting, fasting, yoga, surgery and also using appetite suppressing drugs. Well, what one must do is analysis of eating habits, well, which is found to be much better. One should analyze the stimuli that affect eating. Means what is it which actually force you to eat something even beyond your control? Well, one needs to develop a sense of control over eating. Well, these are the things which one must practice to fight obesity. Well, then comes diet. A healthy diet is very, very, very important. A few minutes back, I was talking about junk food. It doesn't come under the category of healthy diet. Then, studies show that dietary habits are critically involved in the development of diseases like cancer, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases. Well, all these things are actually involved in the development of these things. Then, we talk about the low-fat and low-cholesterol diet, which one must have to reduce the risk of cardiac diseases. Well, dietary control involves meal planning. We should plan what kind of things which we are going to have in a certain time of the day. Then it also depends upon the cooking methods and also the eating habits. It is also seen that intervention with family, that is to tell family about what kind of things which can happen with an obese person. Well, this is also useful for promoting and maintaining dietary change. Attending to health problems. One should never delay any type of health problem, whether it is physical or mental. The moment you feel that you are suffering from something or you find a certain symptom, you must report to a qualified medical practitioner to take the necessary steps before it goes beyond your control. Now, when we talk about positive emotions, a smiling face indicates happiness and mental health. And experiencing positive emotions like love, affection, interest, empathy, forgiveness, gratitude, etc. enhance one's health. Let's talk about the threats to health now. One needs to adopt a very healthy lifestyle to increase longevity. 
Unfortunately, people indulge in many self-destructive behaviors and habits which create many, many, many problems. Now, let us discuss about some which increases the risk for health. The first one is alcohol and drug use. It damages the entire respiratory system, intestine, liver and other bodily systems. Not only this, the thinking capacity and decision making also gets affected. Alcohol in particular affects liver and may also produce liver cirrhosis. Next is smoking, which is another very important threat to health. It increases by folds the chances of lung cancer and heart diseases. Not only that, it also leads to chronic bronchitis and other respiratory disorders. It not only affects the smokers but also the others. Well, when we talk about the active smoker and passive smoker, the one who is smoking is the active smoker and the one who is in the surrounding or the environment of that person is a, is a passive smoker. So both are under threat. So one who is smoking must think that how much problem he is causing not only to himself but also to others. Well, not only this, overweight, being overweight and if you have some sort of stress, this further enhances the health orders along with smoking. Then comes the use of tobacco. Well, in our country, from eating raw tobacco to chew it with palm leaves, it is used in many ways. It can lead to mouth cancer, affecting the oral hygiene, deteriorating the gums and the teeth as well. And then comes the poor nutritional habits. Eating foods which are imbalanced in terms of cholesterol, fats, calories, etc. may actually lead to obesity. And awareness needs to be generous, generated in public about benefits of eating healthy to avoid poor dietary practices. And last comes the lack of exercise. Well, as we have told earlier in the exercise portion, that a healthy body requires adequate exercise, but laziness, time pressure, ignorance about the bodily system leads to sedentary lifestyle, which in turn makes the body weak, sick and premature aging begins. Not only this, as I told you earlier too, that high blood pressure, diabetes type 2, all these things can actually happen to someone who doesn't do any kind of exercise. Then comes the unsafe sex. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus and AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is a fatal disease among drug users by those who actually do it by needle sharing and also among the homosexuals and people, those who engage in sexual activities with multiple partners, they are always under the threat of acquiring HIV AIDS. Around 6.5 million people have died because of AIDS. And once the transmission occurs, the virus goes rapidly. It grows rapidly. And the person affected may suffer from many abnormalities, including neuroendocrine and cardiovascular functioning. Now, let's talk about the interventions for promoting well-being. People preferring green leafy and root vegetables, fresh milk, fresh fruits, and not only that, those who eat low to moderate amount of food and also engage in physical activity and walk on a regular basis and also control the calorie intake are mostly seen to have a healthy and productive lifestyle. According to research studies, these are the following preventive strategies one needs to adopt. They are primary prevention, that is, to reduce or eliminate the occurrence of preventable illness. Well, here one should also help people learn about behavior and health which motivates them to practice healthy lifestyle. It also involves awareness about immunization. Then comes secondary prevention. Well, this is to decrease the severity of illness which a person suffers, like using diagnostic tests that screen the disease. Well, people can also learn about self-examining the body parts and functioning of various organs that may actually help in prevention of the disease. 
And the third is changing the lifestyle. Well, no medicine can help unless you change your lifestyle. The way we think and behave are interrelated. Well, various types of illness are actually caused by our beliefs and habits. To achieve the best state of health, one needs to have a harmony of body and mind. This is something from where I actually begin. Ayurveda, the Indian study of medicine, it suggests that health and well-being depends upon certain factors. They are ahar, that is diet, vihar, that is recreation, achar, that is conduct, and vichar, that is thought. So, let us start with ahar first, that is the diet. Ayurveda says that vegetarian food is safe for the body. Fresh fruits, green vegetables which are rich in fiber, honey and curd, all these things provide vitamins, iron, etc. One should avoid food having opposite effects like hot milk and ice cream. Then comes achar, that is conduct. Well, here Ayurveda says that daily routine should be organized according to season. One should drink lots of water, regularly do exercise and time management, all these things are very important for a healthy lifestyle. Then comes vihar and vichar, that is recreation and thought. Here it says that acceptance of criticism, developing empathy, etc. can actually promote well-being, self-control, that is not to be driven by lust and greed, not to get dominated by negative emotions like fear, anger, jealousy and worry can actually help in creating a healthy lifestyle. Develop enduring friendships and social relations. And last, developing awareness of self, connectivity with others and spiritual inclination and all these things can actually help in promoting well-being and create a harmony among the physical and mental state of us. So what have you learned today? That health is important for individual and society? Contemporary lifestyle is full of stressful experiences. We also learned about health promoting behaviors. And at last, the threats to health and also about various prevention levels. Then, we learned about the ahar, vihar, achar and vichar and all these things can actually help in creating a healthy lifestyle. I hope you have understood what we learned today. Thank you.